everybody. It's Tyler here at the World Championships, checking team number 4253, grade zero coming in from Taiwan. Ray Joe's had an absolutely phenomenal year, uh, crushed the Hawaii Regional, actually one of the most competitive events this year, uh, and has just been on fire so far. Take a look at Raid Zero had to offer. This is a phenomenal machine. I love the uh, arm structures to go all the way through with the intake. They're doing some cool stuff with positional control we'll be talking about, we're talking about what goes into their drive base, and just overall what really makes Raid Zero the pride of Taiwan. Coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Peter, let's start out on the base of your robot here. Talk to me a little bit more about the uh, dry base uh, that goes into your robot. And I know you want to cover a little bit on your gearboxes as well, too. Yeah. So the drive base is uh, just a pretty generic serve drive base. Uh, we tried out serve last year. We really like the maneuverability uh, and just kind of how versatile it is. So it's just uh, uh, we use the SDS Mark IV uh, flipped serve modules, L3 ratio. Um, we found that with our lighter robot, uh, the faster ratio really helped us just be a little bit faster than everyone else. Um, we also have a steel belly pan. And this is just to help keep the CG low because we have a big arm here. When that reaches out, can really sometimes tip the robot. Were you a uh, steel belly pan originally when the season started, or yes. did you convert over to yes. that? Yes, we uh, had steel belly pan since the very beginning. Sure. Yeah. So uh, now, kind of moving on to the gearbox here. So uh, we were really inspired by 971's arm design. Uh, so we kind of referenced that as we were designing. So here's our gearbox. Um, this here, the lower arm, is driven by this uh, large pink gear right here. And underneath the gearbox, there are two uh, Neo motors that go through max planetaries uh, and that connect to this gear and move that lower arm. And then on the other side here, uh, we have another pink gear um, that also has a pulley and a cable, and that drives the upper arm. And um, there, are, uh, there are an additional two Neos uh, on either side of the gearbox that, do, that help move that. And we also have um, absolute encoders belted on either side. Uh, and this just makes it a lot easier for the programmers to control the arm. So there's a, a pulley actually printed into this 3D printed joint here, uh, and that and there's a belt attached to it, and that goes down uh, into an encoder. As we start to get into your arm, and something I'd really like to hear about is like when you were uh, looking at concepts for the game, yeah. what you want to go with. How did you end up coming up or settling on this type of arm for your robot? Why was that a good fit for Raid Zero? So one of the things uh, we wanted was versatility, right? So with a two double jointed arm like this, we can actually pass the intake through the robot, so that allows us to score. Uh, basically any position and on either side of the robot, uh, which we think is a really big plus. Cool. And can you talk to me all just about the composition of the arm itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the uh, main body of the arm is made from carbon fiber tube uh, for its lightweight and durability. And then these kind of gray parts on either end, the joints, they're 3D printed. Um, they're made of nylon. We printed them on the Formlabs Fuse 1, which is an SLS printer that we got this season. Uh, we really like it. These parts are super strong. We've only had one joint break uh, so far. And yeah, it's all held together with epoxy. And then we also have aluminum tubes that go through the joints, and these serve as shafts. So we have tubes on uh, basically all the joints of the intake that go into bearings. And yeah, that's how the whole arm is held together. Yeah, really well built and constructed as we go through. Uh, let's pass over to Kiosk and talk more about the uh, intake uh, of your robot as well, too. And uh, something I'd love to hear is a little bit more about your wrist structure, too, how you came up with that as well, and how it's working out for you. All right. <clears throat> So um, at first, we know that we want a lightweight intake, and we want the intake to be able to touch it and hold it. Um, we want it to be able to be lightweight because we know the arm will have to be moving very fast, and a lightweight intake will allow the base to be more stable. Um, so at first, we actually only had two rollers. We didn't have the third roller. Um, we added the third roller for the Hawaii Regional because after testing, we found out having um, an additional roller over here helps us with the ground intake for cues. So over here is the robot's wrist. So um, as Peter said, we want the intake to be able to pass through. Um, the goal of this is so the, in, the robot can score on one side and can um, go to the double substation to get cubes or cones without turning the robot. So originally, yeah, 
originally we had we wanted a four bar, so the four bar would be connected to this joint, and the intake would just be uh, at the same angle. But after um, after more brainstorming, we discovered a wrist will allow the intake to be even more flexible. So we can have um, the intake uh, be at different angles for the double substation and for cones and cubes and all the different nodes. They can have separate angles and they don't have to be tinkered with with a four bar. As we talk about some of the programming that's gone to this robot, Rex, you're going to cover uh, some different things. Uh, we mentioned a little bit about it, but I'd love to hear more about how you're uh, approaching positional control to make sure that the robot's staying stable, you're in the right spots, and uh, something I always got asked, did they actually give you enough time to make all that happen as a programmer, too? So, as Kian said, since we have a double jointed arm with three degrees of freedom, we have m many different scoring positions. So, as you can see uh, over here on this control board, we have many different arm positions, and uh, let me just go back to idle here. This is our uh, holding position. So whenever we score, we, we obtain a cube or a cone, we go back to the idle position, which is over here. And we have co a cone cube switch over here, which switches the LED lights so, so our drivers can uh, determine whether we're just trying to get a cone or a cube. And so we, um, since scoring cubes, uh, it's very difficult if we drop them uh, vertically. So we have a horizontal scoring position that we can just pop the cubes as, as we drive through. And um, our arm can allows us to go from different go go from both the forward direction and the backwards direction. So we our floor intake is from the opposite side of our bot. So as of before the control theory, uh, in our initial iteration, we we programmed on a wooden arm and we started off by using the oil Lagrangian formulation uh, to calculate the feed forward voltage. Uh, of the arm, but after that we, we determined that using smart motion was actually simpler and much easier uh, since we have the gas shocks for much smoother motion, so we ended up using smart motion to control the arm. Uh, adding on to that, we also use these camera mounts to look at April tags, and using the April tags we can have full field odometry of the field, and with using this control board, we can auto aim to different locations on the field so that our driver can easily score uh, c cones and cubes. Uh, we also have a camera mounted on the intake uh, so that we can determine whether we're getting a cone or a cube. And something we're working on currently is to automatically align to cubes during autonomous and during uh, teleops so that we can obtain cubes on the floor much quicker. Awesome. Well, RAID Zero, an absolutely phenomenal machine that you're bringing here. Uh, of course, we wish you the best of luck at the World Championship here. Uh, but an absolutely uh, amazing robot. And we've been following you for quite a few years and bringing out some of the best of the best of Taiwan ever single year. So thanks a lot and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.